question. Should Christians celebrate Halloween? I get this question every year, this time of year. Some Christians think it is like something you should never celebrate. A lot of Christians actually feel the same way about Christmas because both of these uh, traditions, both of these celebrations um, come from pagan holidays. So therefore, reason some Christians, we shouldn't celebrate Halloween. We shouldn't celebrate Christmas. What does the Bible say about it? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. Now, look, I want to start by saying this really is a matter of personal conviction. I'll get to some of the scripture here in just a little bit that might weigh on this. The Bible actually doesn't say anything at all about Halloween. And so really what we need to do then is take principles from the Bible and apply them to our lives today. I think it's really important wherever you stand on this, wherever you fall on this particular topic, I think it's important to hear both sides. I think it's important to extend grace to one another when it comes to you know being unified together in the body of Christ. Before we get to the text, before we get to some of the scripture passages that impact the way I would answer this question for myself, I want to just talk a little bit about the history of Halloween. It actually starts with all Hallows Eve, but it doesn't even start with that. That's a more of a Catholic uh, tradition. We'll get to that in a second. We got to go all the way back more than 2000 years ago to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Now it's pronounced that way, but it doesn't read like that. It's you spell it S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's pronounced Samhain. This was celebrated, celebrated by the Celts over 2000 years ago primarily in the area that is now Ireland, the UK, and Northern France. It was a festival that celebrated the end of the harvest, the beginning of winter, and so it was associated with death. So the Celts believed that on the night of October 31st, the boundary between the physical world and the spirit world became thin, allowing ghosts and spirits to cross over. Okay, so that's kind of the very beginning of this thing. It had nothing to do with Halloween yet, but it is October 31st. And it was a pagan ritual. That's that's the truth. Fast forward to the Roman Empire expanding, conquering the Celtic lands by the first century AD. And then the Romans brought their own festivals and beliefs, which blended some of the local traditions. So one of the festivals was called Feralia, a day in late October when Romans commemorated the dead. Another one was called Pomona, a celebration of the goddess of fruits and trees. And so the association of Pomona, if if you think about like bobbing for apples as a Halloween tradition, that a lot of people think that that traces back to the Roman festival of Pomona. Okay, so we have the Celts, we have the Romans, and then fast forward now to the spread of Christianity across Europe. And this is when a lot of these pagan festivals were Christianized to align with church doctrine. So in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III moved All Saints Day. This was a day to honor all Christian saints and martyrs. He moved that day to November 1st, right? Just the day after this uh, this Celtic festival. And so they started calling October 31st All Hallows Eve because it was the all saint it was the eve of all saints days that makes sense you know christmas day is the 25th christmas eve so this all saints day is november 1st and so all saints eve or all hallows eve would have been on october 31st and over time we stopped calling it all hallows eve and now we call it halloween by the way all saints day was followed by all souls day okay so november 1st all saints day those are all the believers who are in heaven, according to the Catholic tradition. And then All Souls Day, November 2nd, is a day to pray for the souls of the dead who had not yet entered heaven. So yes, this is connected to the Catholic doctrine of purgatory, which is not a biblical doctrine. I'll put a link to another topic uh, related to purgatory in the show notes below. So there's a quick little history of Halloween. It started as a Celtic pagan ritual. It had Roman influence. Eventually, it had Christian influence by the 8th century. It is connected to All Hallows' Eve and becomes Halloween in the medieval period then. And then into America, of course, the influence of the Europeans on America. And that's why we celebrate what we celebrate today. That's why there are 20-foot skeletons in yards of your neighbors. So back to the question for today. Should Christians celebrate it? I mean, it definitely has pagan roots. But now 
it seems to be innocent enough, at least for some of us. I'm sure those of you who are watching this, you're thinking of it pretty innocently. Can I, you know, dress up my daughter as Raggedy Ann and we go out and trick or treat, ask the neighbors for some candy. Is that okay to do? And I want to share some scripture verses on this. Before I do, I just want to tell you what Tracy and I did, my wife and I. We celebrated Halloween. Well, I wouldn't say that we celebrated Halloween. We allowed our kids to participate in Halloween. It's not like we celebrated it. You know, we live in Utah and it's really bizarre in Utah that people, I think this is a Mormon influence thing, but people in Utah love Halloween. They actually celebrate Halloween. I mean, they deck out their yards. They've got skeletons and stuff all over the place. So they're literally celebrating this thing. I would say that Tracy and I participated or allowed our kids to participate in Halloween we didn't celebrate it. In other words, it wasn't like a huge deal to us. It wasn't this huge, big party that we threw. It wasn't something that we wanted our kids to love more than Christmas or Easter, for example. So for us, we participated, but we didn't really celebrate. And one of the reasons is because of this verse, Ephesians 5.11, it says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. So we used Halloween as an opportunity as our kids saw all these creepy skeletons in the yards in our, in our neighborhood. We used it as an opportunity to teach our kids about the Bible, to teach our kids about death, sure, to teach our kids about Jesus, but also not to create such a tension there that we were going to draw a hard line and not participate, not let them enjoy uh, the, the innocent parts of this thing. Because we felt like if we drew a line like that, I think that that legalism could come back to bite us and to bite them in the end. So like so many other things in life and in parenting, we talked about, the, we used this occasion to talk about Halloween and why some people put skeletons out there and why some people celebrate the scary stuff and the death stuff. We would talk about that because death is real, and but we're not going to celebrate the stuff that the world celebrates. So instead, we encouraged our kids to enjoy it, to have fun, eat some candy, but we didn't make a major deal of Halloween one way or the other. I think this was a, an important strategy for us as parents. We think that this was a helpful way to do it. Now, I know some other Christian parents who said, no way, we're not going to celebrate, we're not going to participate even in Halloween. And again, I understand that. If that's the conviction that you feel, I think you should go with that. But I think you should just be aware that it might actually draw more attention to Halloween instead of less attention. See, the, the approach that we took, Halloween was like a non-issue. It wasn't that big of a deal because it wasn't so forbidden. Now, our churches, we celebrated harvest parties, but we still had some people showing up in ghost costumes and skeleton costumes. We tried to minimize that as much as we could. But by not making a huge deal of it, I think that really at the end of the day, our kids didn't really think that much about Halloween. This is what I like to call the fundamental law of legalism. Okay, so think about this, parents. Maybe you've never thought about this before. But here's the fundamental law of legalism. Drawing a hard line in gray areas weakens the hard lines we draw on important stuff. Again, this is my perspective. I think this is a gray area. Some of you, maybe you disagree, and that's fine. You're welcome to leave comments on this particular episode and let me know about it. But I think that if you turn everything into a battle, then when you really want to battle something, your kids aren't going to really probably pay attention to it. I think this is the problem with being overly legalistic on topics like Halloween. You may risk winning the battle on that particular topic for right now, but in the long run, losing the war with your kid's faith because everything is just so black and white. Romans 14 verses 5 and 6, it says, one person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. You know, there are so many passages in the New Testament that talk about like living in that gray area, not on the clear black and white. There's so much in the Bible that is clearly black and white. This one in my mind belongs in the gray area. It's like when Paul talked about eating food sacrificed to idols. 
Gentiles and Jews are in one church together. The Jews had a certain perspective when they thought about food sacrifice to idols. Gentiles had another perspective. And what Paul says there is everyone should do what their own conscience tells them to do, but you shouldn't put that on the other person, on the other believer, because it's a gray area. Halloween to me is kind of like one of those gray areas. I think that there's room for different convictions, but everyone's goal should be to glorify God. So Tracy and I, this was our goal is we wanted to glorify God. We wanted to point even our own kids more to Jesus by not making a big deal of Halloween. And so that's what we did. And I'm happy to report that our kids love Jesus. Now, again, not just because of that, but because in general, I think we were trying not to be too hard lined on some of these gray areas. We know a lot of parents that were super black and white. And sadly, many of those parents have kids now that don't even follow Jesus. So that's my perspective on how to deal with it in your own family. But I want to just say one more thing before we're done with this episode. I think the other thing we need to consider when it comes to Halloween is the witness that we have to the world. 1 Peter 3.15 says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And I think that Halloween, Christmas, some of these pagan you know, festivals that are now Christian festivals. And again, I know a lot of Christians that are saying, this is pagan. These are pagan roots and it's demonic. And I just don't take that, that angle. I don't believe that that's true. In fact, I think that the more you do that, then the more the world who's looking at you as a Christian, the more they think that you're just weird. You're, you're losing kind of like we can do with our kids. We can lose, we can win a battle, but lose the war. I believe my conviction is that we can do the same thing as Christians in our culture if we're just saying no to everything in the world, rather than looking at some of these things like Halloween as an opportunity to reach out and make an impact on the world around us and share the reason for the hope that we have. Point people to Jesus. This is why our church puts on harvest parties every Halloween time. We do this because we want to reach out to families and show them that, that we love kids, we love families, we love to have fun. Now, we're not going to call it a Halloween party, but some of the people who show up from the community didn't get the memo. So they show up in some of those costumes that, that I wouldn't have dressed my kids in. But we extend grace to that because we want to be Jesus to those people. We want to point them to Jesus, and we want to show them that as a community of faith, we love our families and we love enjoying any kind of festival, even if it has pagan roots. Paul says it like this in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's my take on this question. Should Christians celebrate Halloween? I don't think we should celebrate it, but I think that it's okay for us to participate in it if it brings glory to God.